Let us worship the God of plenty, who clothes the woods with green leaves, the fields with crops, and the meadows with flowers, and sends us sun to warm and rain to refresh. Creator God, we know that on this planet there is enough, and indeed plenty for all. Help us to be good stewards of your plenty, working with you so that all may be fed, all may be secure, and all may come to know and honour you, the giver of all good things. Amen. Our first song today is a, a well-known one, As the Deer Pants for the Water. Please do join in if you want to sing. Uh, you can either remain seated or stand up. Or um, if you'd like to just listen, uh, you can just listen to it. Then someone called from the crowd, Teacher, please tell my brother to divide our father's estate with me. Jesus replied, Friend, who made me a judge over you to decide such things as that? Then he said, Beware. Guard against every kind of greed. Life is not measured by how much you own. Then he told them a story. A rich man had a fertile farm that produced fine crops. He said to himself, what should I do? I don't have room for all my crops. Then he said, I know, I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones. Then I'll have room enough to store all my wheat and other goods. And I'll sit back and say to myself, my friend, you have enough stored away for years to come. Now take it easy, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, You fool, you will die this very night. 
then who will get everything you worked for? Yes, a person is a fool to store up earthly wealth, but not have a rich relationship with God. I think there are very few in our society who think you are not measured by your wealth. Um, it's very easy uh, to be drawn into that idea that what matters is our wealth and our, our value and status in uh, our jobs and our places of work and the things that people see us for physically rather than the people we are and what is inside us. Uh, but Jesus was very much focused on trying to help people to see that what really matters is who they are and what they are and how they are not what they own or where they have been placed in society. I once had a friend who said to me, I'm worth 500 pounds a day. I thought, you just happened to be fortunate that you lived in the right family, you got the right opportunities, you ended up in a job that somebody would pay you 500 pounds a day for. I'm not sure that you were worth any more than the person who probably uh, had a much lesser job we are all worthy and valuable. We all are significant, and it's who we are and what we are, how we behave towards one another that really matters to God. And of course, our relationship with God. Jesus talks about our relationship with God and how we learn from him, listen to him, and grow in his ways, grow in the ways of love and kindness, of care and compassion. And those are not easy things to do. Sometimes it is much easier to focus in on ourselves and the things that we could easily have. And in our world of opportunity, all of us, and myself included, have an immense amount. We have uh, so much more than so many uh, down so many generations and across so many parts of the world. And we need to be careful that our possessions do not take over our hearts, do not take over our minds, and do not take over our souls. For our souls can easily be dragged down by those things that we own. We can become scared and worried by what we own and the need to protect it and care for it when we can simply rather trust it to God and be thankful for it and use it and make good use of it for ourselves, for those we love and for our wider world and those who are in need and make our world better, make our own lives better, because we're not those who are so concerned about protecting ourselves, not so concerned about protecting what we have, but are willing to be generous with it. Many of the uh, people who I've met in poorer parts of the world have often been the most generous, the most kind, and the most open-hearted. And it's also the case of many of the stories I hear from uh, funerals and from the lives of those who lived in this country uh, not that long ago who often say we had so little but our doors were open and we had a great community and we need to be careful that we find ways of ensuring that happens and that there is no one left amongst us lonely and hurting and without the care that they could have and it's a difficult one because people do so easily uh, retract themselves away into their worlds and uh, having finding a way to enable them to come out is something that we need to be good at and we need to be good at welcoming and I know that uh, in this church there is a lot of that a lot of very good care and welcome and a sense of trying to build community in a place that in some ways has become a dormitory a place where so many people do not see each other because they come and focus on their work and their families and the people they know who they can travel to and do not form community amongst those who they live with. So we are called by God to be those who sit lightly to our possessions. Yes, be grateful for them. Yes, enjoy them. Yes, make the most of them. Jesus wasn't one who made us all dowdy and unhappy and uh, feel bad about having things. He required that we use those things well and do not sit hev too tight to them that we cannot use them for good and that they drag us down. We pray that God may help us to do that because it's not always easy in a world where possessions so often define who people are. 
And so often people judge us by what we have rather than who we are. Let us be those who judge others by who they are and encourage them because they are all and each one wonderful. Amen. The next song is Open the Eyes of My Heart. Do sing along if you know it, or just listen to the words. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open my eyes, Lord. For our lack of generosity and giving, of caring and sharing, Lord, forgive us. For our neglect of need of body, mind or soul, Lord, forgive us. For our silence when words would have healed and for harsh words that needn't have been spoken, Lord, forgive us for our living that fails to put into practice what we hear of you and from you. Lord, forgive us for our ignoring of your truths, your ways, your words. Lord, forgive us. Amen. We have confessed our sins, Lord. Jesus taught us to pray to you and Jesus promised that our sins would be forgiven. We trust in your promises, and amid the cacophony of noise that life throws at us, may we hear your word. My son, my daughter, my child, your sins are forgiven. Go and live well to the glory of my name and the good of all. Amen. Looking out for number one is rife in the way of the world, Lord. 
We pray for all who work for selfish gain to the detriment of others. Help them and us to see that working purely for personal pride and satisfaction is futile and that serving you leads to everlasting joy. We pray for the lives of those who are neglected. Speak into their lives, Lord. Help them and us become aware of the relationship with you that can transform lives. We pray too for all who seek wisdom in purely human sources. May they and we understand that true wisdom and happiness can be found only in you. We pray for all those caught up in webs of lies and deceit, the unethical and immoral. Break down the barriers preventing them and us from seeing the errors of their and our ways. We bring these prayers before you in and through your glorious name. Amen. And now, these modern words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Dad in heaven above, let everyone look up to you and the area where you are in charge grow. May what you want happen on earth as perfectly as it does in heaven. Please give to us what we need for today. Forgive us when we think or do wrong things, just as we don't hold it against those who hurt us. Guide us away from whatever we might want, but is unhelpful to us, and protect us from all that is nasty and destructive. For you are in charge of everything. You have the power to do it, and you are awesome. You always were, you are now, and always will be. Amen. Our final song today is I Am a New Creation.
Loving God, you have given us eyes to see the beauty and bounty of the earth and minds to understand the importance of sharing. As we go from this place, make us quick to see where there is injustice or suffering and generous to do what we can to alleviate either. Amen. And may your heart be at peace and your mind to be at rest. May you be confident in who you are and share God's gifts of light, hope, and grace with those you meet and those you pray for. May the blessing of God fill your hearts with hope this day and evermore. Amen. Thank you.